Welcome back. So in this session, what we'll be doing is we will be taking a different approach. We will be discussing some problem statements and we'll try to write some query against it. So what we'll do is we will cover some concepts by directly writing queries against our AdventureWorks database. So let's get started. I'm going to click on new query and let's just make sure we are using the right database. All right. Okay, let's get started. Now let's let's look at some tables first, right? Let's look at the department table and write a select query. So select um, name or let's say select star from human resources dot department. So star generally means that give me everything, all the columns. So if you say, if you look at our columns, we have four columns, star will just give you everything. Just, just highlight that, press F5, and you can look at some sample data over here. So it has about 16 rows, and let's write some queries against them. So let's start with something simple. Let's say, show me all the department names. By the way, you see the two dash I have put over here? That basically says that this is a comment, right? I mean, these statements will not be executed. And these are just plain comments where, you know, you put it in front of your code so that you can understand your code a little bit more better. And this can be any text. So let's proceed. Select name from human resources dot department and let's see what it gives us. So it should give us only the names. All right, let's proceed. How about we get all the groups? Show me all the groups. So groups is basically stored in this group name. So basically what we're going to do is select group name from human resources dot department. So you get the idea by now. Right, you select, you use the word select followed by the column names and then you specify the table name in order to get the results. And again, just to reiterate, the ones you see in blue are the inbuilt keywords. All right, now I wanted to introduce you to a keyword called distinct. Now, if you look at the group names, you see a lot of repetitions, right? It just gives you all the rows. But what if I asked you, just give me the distinct values from here. Don't repeat it, right? So something like this, show me all the distinct group names. And this is where the keyword distinct comes handy. So you say select distinct group name from human resources department. You see that it gives you just a unique set of values. Cool. Now, I want to introduce you to filtering. And this is where we use the where clause. So let's, let's say, let's actually look at all the data once more. And, it, and by the way, you can selectively just highlight what you want in the, in the query and then click or press F5 to execute that part of the query. So this is our overall data. And let's say if we just want to look at any record that has the word manufacturing in it. So you see we have record number seven, eight, and probably that's it. So this is where, you know, our where clause comes handy. So show me all the department department names who are a part of manufacturing, right? So the way you do it is select, uh, let's choose name and group name, right? From our adventureworks.humanresources.department 
and where we say that where group name we introduce a keyword called like like is basically you say that the group name should match the word manufacturing now this is more likely we we call it as an exact match so it's going to look at the column group name and it's going to see if it has a value called manufacturing let's see what it gives us so it gives us two rows right now okay now let's um, since we have introduced where clauses let's basically um, you know play around a little bit with where clauses right you see that we filtered by using a text let's filter by using some integers as well so let's just just so that it doesn't get too boring let's choose some other table so let's say give me all the employees um, from the employee table you know we have an employee table here so I'm going to just write a query called select star from human resources dot employee I'm going to press F5 and this gives us about 290 rows so you see here it's it's about 290 rows and it has a bunch of information okay now let's 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 play around with a where clause okay let's say give me a list of um, say all employees who have a org level you see the organization level equal to two right so here we are filtering based on an integer let's see how to write that select star from human resources dot employee where organization level equal to two so you see for an integer we use the sign equal to and for text we use the keyword like okay let's see what this gives us so you see that it gives us only the rows that have an organizational level equal to two perfect now let me slightly modify this let me say give me a list of all employees who have org level equal to two or three you see there are two two um, conditions I have put here right okay let's see how about how we go about writing this we say select star from human resources dot employee these things remain the same where organization level in two comma three so we introduce the keyword in here basically it says that you have a list and give me all the rows which match this criteria let's see what it gives us so sure enough it gives us all records which have an organization level as two or three right perfect okay now let's take one more example of of a text value just so that we get some practice let's say we need um, okay let me just look at the data once more okay okay let's choose this row facilities manager so let's say give me a list of employees who have a title as facilities manager so by now you must have figured out we write select star from human resources dot employee where job title so should it be equal or should it be like now we are going to use a text match here so we'll use the keyword like facilities manager so sure enough it just gives us 
one row now what happens if I don't match the casing if I write something like this facilities manager all uppercase what do you think will happen here let's find out you see that still it gave you that one row back this means that this is not case sensitive you can pretty much you know use any casing and basically if the text matches it's going to give you that record back okay now one thing you find over here is you're doing something called as an exact match meaning whatever you have given here should exactly match with the job title let's try something else you see I put two spaces in the end so what it is doing is it is trying to match from the set of records the keyword facilities manager space space and there is no record like that because it's doing an exact match what if I told you there is a wild card where you say that okay give me all the records that at least have the word manager in it I don't really care whether it's facilities manager or any other manager so the way you do that is using a wild card so let's 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 say something like this give me all the employees who have a title or let's say who have the word manager in their title right how about that so we say select star from human resources but job title like manager now would this give us any result at all no let's see it won't because it's basically checking for an exact match right but what we need is we need to get all the records that basically have that keyword wherever it is but we basically it should have the word manager in its job title so we introduce something called as a wild card it's a person sign this basically says that anything can be before the word manager but nothing should be after the word manager right so if we execute this you see that the percent is anything that is before the word manager and there's nothing after the word manager right so this is how you um, look at this is how you do pattern matching now let's look at one more example you see the job title production control manager document control manager let's say we want to basically return all the records that have the word control right and anything can be before and after the word control the way you do this is control and after control you put a person sign which means that anything can be before the word control and anything can be after the word control but you need to have the word control in your um, job title let's look at this see this is how you so in this case there is nothing and that's also a perfectly valid scenario right and you see this is how the pattern matching happens so this is kind of playing around with you know how to filter your data using text and using integers all right so let's let's go further now I want to introduce you to a little bit more where clauses but we'll be we'll be trying to filter out some dates right we we have your birth date higher date let's try to play around with them we'll have a separate session on how to manipulate dates but here the point of the the, the next few queries is just to see what are the possibilities to filter out dates okay now let's say let's just look at the entire data set okay now let's say we want to get all employees who are born after say 1st of January 1980 so how do we do that so give me all employees who are born after Jan 1 1980 how do we do that again this will give us 
all the employees but we need to add a filter so we say where birth date and this is where we introduce the greater than sign greater than month date 1980 let's see what this does so sure enough you see that it's it's kind of filtered all the data and given you all the records which match this criteria where the birth date is greater than 1st of January 1980 perfect all right how about now we play around with some range date ranges right we say that give me all the employees who are born between 1970 and 1980 let's see how that looks like so give me all employees who are born between Jan 1, 1970 and Jan 1, 1980. So how do we go about doing that? So one of the ways is using, of course, you can, you can say that where birth date is greater than 1st January 1970 and birth date it's birth date I think I should just make this correction quickly here is less than 1st of January 1980 right so this will give you that range SQL server also provides you another inbuilt keyword to do this so you say that select let me just copy paste this part and that's called as the between clause so you say birth date between 1 1 1970 and 1 1 1980 so it's going to look between these dates and return the results to you so you see that all are between 1970 and 1980 okay so I think um, you must have got a good understanding of some of the key concepts here um, what we will do is we will look at some advanced concepts now we'll look at some ordering classes how to order your data in ascending order how to order your data in descending order how to join tables how to run some aggregations and so on and so forth